Hey guys. So today we're going to go over a content calendar and how to actually schedule out posts to Facebook and Instagram. So you only have to do this once every week or two weeks and not have to constantly monitor. So throughout the day, you're still going to want to answer questions and reply and of course interact with people. But having to think of your daily posts should only happen once or twice a month. Um, first things first, I'm going to send this out to everyone. It's just a basic, easy content calendar that we're going to have for everyone. Um, you'll put your, your date across the top. I know it's not even near it. Well, I can't figure out. This is not a Mac. Control Z. Control Z. Control. There's a. Okay. Yeah. There it is. Thank you. And every month, just go ahead and put go fill out a new one of these and put your dates across it as it is. And then you'll see right below here it says content in this square. Um, each person's calendar is going to look completely different. Out to the side over here, I want you to do on a two week rotation, figure out what kind of content you'd like to post. You'll see a lot of agents doing like, oh, this is my local, my new favorite coffee shop of the week. You know, come up with the, be, be creative, but come up with a plan where let's call it Mondays are, we'll call it Mondays are your bathroom day. So each listing you have, post a picture of the bathroom and say, who would like to, who would like to stay in that? You know, who would like to own this, this listing that has this bathroom? You want to always ask questions and create engagement. But the point of creating a calendar is you're going to take all the guesswork out always. So you can color code these as well. So I color code these for other companies where we can say red is, we'll call it listings or new listings. We'll go to the next one. We'll call it green as local business. And you keep going through. So I know that on Wednesdays or that whatever that date is for you, I always want to have a local business Emma, going through on, on, on Wednesdays of the week. The next day, we'll want new listings or your listing of the week. Um, I'm not sure what the protocol is. Can you share the people's listings as long as you get permission from them? Yeah, you actually don't have to get permission from them. I found out recently, but it's courtesy. It's courtesy, yeah. That. That's a good practice to have. Like, yeah. So, again, yeah, that you have to give them credit for their brokerage. Yeah. Oh, yes, perfect. Yeah. Um, we'll say Fridays. We'll call Fridays local out and about, something like that. Um, where there's events or you're showing off something in your, you know, your favorite restaurant, whatever it is, you need to decide what your calendar or what kind of content you're wanting to really post and share. I would recommend a couple days a week doing listings since that's what you do. Um, client reviews, if you can start getting a lot of client reviews, if you're new, get somebody to give you two or three different sentences that you can use over a course of a few weeks. Now the smart plan set up, make sure you have one that sends your request for client reviews after every quarter. Yes. So now that we've kind of, kind of built out what the color coding in our content looks like, now, all we have to do is find the content we're going to post. Um, and that is going to be the hardest part of all of this. So if you have a bunch of testimonials art up there with a couple of pictures of your clients at their house or whatever it is, we're going to throw all those into a folder. So we continually just throw everything into a folder. So we don't have to go looking for it. We're going to go to Wednesday. This first one. What was that one again? Local, we'll, we'll call that the local business one. Go to a coffee shop, take a few pictures, and then as soon as you get to wherever you're going, put it in the folder on your desktop so it's there. And we can mark this one. Oh, hey there. What just happened? He's adding in. There was some noise. Okay. I'm going to go. Um, so we're going to go through each day and pull that particular picture and put it in a folder, date in the date range folder. So after we've gone through and we've collected 
our two weeks of content that we know we're going to post. Easiest part is next. We're going to go over to Facebook and we're going to do everything from Facebook. And in your search bar of Facebook, all you got to do is type in Creator Studio. And this is a tool that not a lot of people know about that's free to everyone. Hey guys, if you're on the Zoom, please mute yourself. Um, and this is what the Creator Studio looks like. It will be changing. You see that yellow bar at top? It's going to be changing to Meta Business Suite, but it's not going to change a lot. Um, if you have multiple business pages, multiple agent pages, all of your pages will, will drop down here. Once you get going, I would just get rid of everything that you don't want to work with, that you're not posting to. So it'll only show you can't be a personal page. It has to be a business page. Everyone should have a business page. Well, the recently about changing your business page to a creator or digital creator, is that the term? Your personal page? I think it was business because I tried to look at my personal page to change it if I could. You have to have a written app or brand. Yeah. And a lot of that is you don't want to, you want it to be a business. Friends on your personal, then you. I want to get more friends or followers. Yeah. And you want to keep it. You're a real estate agent. You're not a creator. You want to be. A, you want to be a real estate business. And also, when you when you go to post things, you want it to be with real estate because a creator doesn't know the laws when it comes to real estate. So, real, Facebook will flag everything you do because of Fair Housing Acts. They already do that now. They're more likely to do it if you're not under a, a real estate tag. Um, so you see these two icons at the top of the screen where you have Facebook next to Instagram. We're just gonna, you can switch between the two here that fast. So as when we're on Facebook, we're only gonna be scheduling to Facebook. So you're gonna do this twice, but it's, it's just that simple. So we're gonna hit a create new post. I keep hitting the left button. We're gonna hit create new post. And we're just going to get, uh, blah, blah. let's see if we can find a photo on here. Yada, yada, yada. Let's hope we don't find anything inappropriate. Uh, I'm blind. Leave me alone. There's no pictures. Wonderful. Anyways, we would hit add photo right here. And you would add a photo. And it would automatically start letting you preview, pre link, pre off. You can add links in here. You can tag people. You can upload your videos, everything from here. Is it easier to do this on your computer or? You have to do this on your computer it's for. Not, it's not a phone based. You don't want it to be because this, this allows you to copy. I mean, you, you want to streamline this. Yes. Okay. A phone is a distraction when you're trying to get through a couple of weeks of posting before you get out. And then once we've got our post and our picture and our hashtags, um, Facebook, all the data recommends three hashtags or less on Facebook and use the full amount on Instagram. Um, I think it's 30, 30 tags on Instagram. But here, the best part about that is on Instagram, if everyone's phone has a notepad on it, everyone's computer has a notepad on it, go find the most relevant hashtags that you can. The most relevant, so really, all you have to do is Google's top real estate hashtags. Don't use the first 10 because it's going to bury your post, but I only save about 20 because I want to add my own custom hashtags in each time. So you only have to figure out 10 to 10, five to 10 and copy and paste that on your post each time. You don't have to go and type each one out. Just copy and paste you save that on, like a notepad or something? on a notes pad. Yeah. I've got five or six different notes for five or six different companies we work with that we just literally copy and paste every single time. And then right down here, next to publish, there's a little drop down area. Schedule post, pick your date on your calendar so we can oh, tab. So we can go back here and say, oh, Wednesday's, I'm posting this one to Wednesday. I'll come back over here and I'll say, oh, that's for Wednesday between 10 and 11 a.m. That's the best posting times. And then you just hit save. And that day is scheduled. So once we've scheduled that day, all we have to do is go back over to this on the Instagram section, 
and I just mark that cell nice and black. Did it automatically generate the best kind of post for you, or do you just know that? It just, that's well, that's the time it gave it there. But no, between 10 and 11, I don't usually change the number at the end of it. I just change the first number to 10 and go to hit AM and schedule. Okay. So now that we've, so we've done that one. Now our next one, Thursday, we would go over here. We would hit add photo. We'd create a new post, go to my date range folder, if that was it. Find the photo that we named for that day. Add it to the post. Once we've typed our little kitschy hashtags and everything else in there, come over here, hit schedule post. Go check, oh, that needs to be on Thursday for that one. Come up here, change it to Thursday. It's already at 1035, hit save and then pub, uh, schedule. And again, come back over here. It's a nice back and forth. Like I told you, this is the fast part. Um, since we've got, and after we get our two weeks published through where we? we're on Facebook right now, everything published will show up down here as, no, you can, you can publish a whole, you can schedule a whole year out if you wanted to, um, but that doesn't really keep you relevant. Now that we've done all of, once we've blacked out all of these cells here for both weeks, We've, pet, we've scheduled all of these. We now know, okay, my next two weeks for Instagram or Facebook is done. Yeah, yeah. For that week. Well, yeah, you said, yeah, yeah. For that week or two weeks, whatever I scheduled up for, you don't have to worry about posting from that for that whole week. You still want to do stories because people want to see your life. The way I see it is stories are for your daily life and your lifestyle. Poster for pre professional posts. Then we go back over here. Now we want to go to Instagram. We just click our little Instagram link at the top. You can see where I've pre-published a lot of things for these other companies. And all I have to do now is come over here and hit the same thing, create, and it will pop up on the right side for some reason. Blah, blah, blah. You could add a add your photo from where, wherever your folder is. Yeah, you can tell. The more information you can give these guys, the better. Yeah, so if you want to fill out every... You can tag locations. You can tag other people involved. You can give them their at symbols. The best part about this one is you start type. You type the at. Let's call it. You start typing someone's name out for Instagram. There's my account. All I got to do is click it. It automatically makes it a clickable link on Instagram once it posts. Oh, nice. So hashtags, ats, use them all. Facebook and Instagram. Um, you can tag products if you had a, if you had an online shop. You can tag products, um, link websites if you have a, over the certain amount of followership, and then again. Do you suggest more photos on Instagram, or is it still one photo and then go from there? Instagram really likes reels. Oh yeah. Really likes reels. Worst part about Creator Studio is you cannot post reels through it. So you're going to post a lot of reels. You're just going to have to put a calendar reminder in your phone. 1025, 1026, post reel, put an alarm on there. You can make it take it as a draft and go back and post it. Correct. And auto post like you did. Yeah. So our software is going to allow you to do that if you need to make it. Yes. So I'm saying like what, for the post, like you suggest one photo on or like the video, video. Or like do you post like three or four? Like what? I mean, it, it depends on how much content you you have to spare. Yeah. I mean, essentially, you know, my thought on this, everyone should be getting a professional photographer, at least for the nicest listings you can. Well, they'll send you 30, 30 pictures of that home. You have 30 posts right there. They may not be the most elegant or engaging, but that's a post when, so yeah. The goal is to post every single day. And if it takes posting a picture of a closet and the caption being, look how big this closet is, or what would you put in here? Can you picture your things here? I mean, it's still engagement. And it's, they're still getting posts every day. So Instagram and Facebook will automatically push you out more. Average engagement is below 6%. If you're getting 6%, you're killing it. That means if you have 100 followers, six people are seeing your post. Where do you find those statistics? Or how do you look at You can that? just, you can Google. I mean, everyone has a different... Verbiage for personal, it. Like engagement. Insights on here. Yeah. Yeah. And so you use that whenever you're again trying to post at the the highest peak time. Yeah. Like or do you just post it? 
I mean, here's the thing. You can post a reel at 6 p.m. and it could get great traction and you could do it the next night at the same time, you know, it's flop. Right. Yeah. There is it's just hard to gauge it. Yeah. Well, there's yeah, there's just no there's no algorithm for that. Right. But there's averages. So you can also like look at your insights daily and keep a tab like what's working for you. What's working for you and your audience. That's what I have to do with Michelle is I posted what the internet told me to post. She didn't know the age of it. Yeah. But after being here, I'm like and looking at her like what her posts get viewed at, women get viewed, these are being viewed by. Um, we have more male viewers than we have female viewers, worth my money, but I started to gear my content more something that a, a male would, would look at and click on, and our engagement's gone up by 40%. Hmm. On Facebook, you can copy and paste a YouTube link as a post. Does everyone know about the post? And then let me just show you. Okay, let me get in. How do you add a tab on this thing? There we go. <laughs> I'm used to Mac. Yeah. So education. If you really want to get, I mean, new home buyers, find videos that are really well done. I'm sure Keller Williams has a ton too, that offers education to new home new home buyers or, or how to change an air filter. Anything is better than nothing. The goal being. So what we're going to do is hit share underneath these videos, hit copy, come back over to Creator Studio. And as soon as you paste that sucker, that's not the correct one on here. There we go. It should, there should be a preview on this side, but there's not for some reason. That is weird. Yeah. No, it's there. Try, yep, that's the whole thing. Copy. Usually, when you paste it over here, sticking. Like, yeah, it should auto populate on the right side of the screen right here. It should populate what it looks like. Typically, when you post a link, the video will pop up, and then you, all you have to do is come back and you can delete that link. And it'll the video will still be up there. Correct. You can delete it and it just be the video up there. Um, three hashtags, and then on the other, like I said, on Instagram you can't do that on Instagram because it's Instagram. Um, Is there a different time for posting on Instagram versus Facebook? Like that? There's different times again for every single day, and every single genre has its own statistics. If you really want to get into it, you can just search what times are best for posting real estate content on Instagram, on Facebook. And it'll get, you know, every website will also give you their own thoughts. The averages across are 10 a.m. or 5 p.m. But again, consistency is also better. If you can start getting a followership for your witty content, people are going to know it's going to be at 10 a.m. If you're starting to post, at the most random times throughout the day, they'll be checking. Yeah. Um, I hate the word influencer, but you almost have to become a real estate influencer. It's, it's should be one fourth of your business, if not one third to grow your business, because this is how people find you now. Um, you can see here, these, these are reels. These are stories. So on the creator studio, these are stories that I shared to this account. So it will give you, it metrics people waiting to get in the room really quick sorry do you care to click that and then let them all in how do i do that uh so admit admit all there yeah there you go yeah so even on so we're on instagram we're on creator studio which all you have to do is go to, to facebook these are already published so these are things going on right now this is a story that i shared to that account from that somebody else tagged us in so it'll give you metrics on all of those as well. Um, you can preview a lot of these. Like, so this one, you know, this is an educational piece that I shot for that company. And it's, it's 15 seconds. You guys can do these all day long and have endless posts. Um, 
what's the best time of year to put your house on the market? You know, exactly. Like <laughs> that could be that funny. Exactly. So like, you know, the answer is yesterday, <laughs> call me, like make engagement, put words on the screen. I don't know the statistic. I know it's extremely high that most people watch without sound. Don't make it annoying. Don't make it like the emojis flying out there and all this other crap. Um, be educational. Get, give value. Because that's that's the whole thing you're trying to do to begin with. It's just give value. And these Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, they all have the auto caption functions. You need to watch them because they don't always get all the words right and you can get in some deep crap. Um, but they have auto functions. Uh, these, I didn't use all 30 on this one because on reels, they, they only wanted me to use like 10, but again, these are copied and pasted hashtags from their sites. Um, let me find another example. If you're going to, most pictures should be the taller, the picture, the better, because it takes up more of the feed on Instagram. Um, but yeah, again, Quick Instagram, tag who the business is, the Primal Outdoors is the tag. Um, lots of hashtags. I usually separate the main part from the hashtags. People don't give a crap about hashtags. It's just how Instagram puts you know puts it out to other people. Um, and you can see your performance, your post performance, actions taken, how many people's reach, how many impressions. Each post will have its own within this right here. It's, it's demographics. You can see pre-published here's my you know i've got scheduled out for the next three days sunday i've got to start scheduling again but here's here's my next three posts for this company pops up that's interesting yeah. you can always it's this easy if you it's like oh man i really i want to post this tomorrow all you have to do is come in here publish now or come over here and edit edit the time and date that you want to schedule it. You can always push out another post. There's no need to delete it or anything like that. You can move to the next day and just make a note in your content calendar um, for everyone else just joining. And content calendar, this is what we kind of built. You're going to build your own out. So the colors represent, we'll call red new listings, green a local business, blue a testimonial. You go out and you put the colors of what you want. You go out and find a piece of content, piece of content for each day, put it in a folder, and then it's easy just to publish from there. Um, I highly recommend everyone just find something unique. I'm not saying kitschy, but unique that you can post if it's copy shop of the week. And then you can even say, hey, go in there and use a code. Go in there and drop a hundred bucks at the counter, buy a gift card, leave it there. And say so anybody that comes up and says my name, use this card till it's done. Call me when it's over. You know, giving value, giving value. And that's a that's an easy post. That's an easy way to get people to follow you. So just keep up on top of these. Any questions? Yeah, say this wasn't a really in-depth thing. This is just it can be this easy to get. I think everyone gets overwhelmed with, oh man, I got to post every day. Yes, you do, but it doesn't have to be posting every day. You can do it once or twice a month. Um, yeah. Say I'll second a question that came earlier. So those kinds of, it always feels like a cat and mouse game, right? Mm -hmm. The user versus the algorithm, which works best, this kind of thing. What do you go to for sources to kind of understand that then? Is it a guessing game? If it is no, a guessing game, how much of it? The only person who knows the Instagram and Facebook algorithms are the people writing them. Right. Otherwise, we'd all be billionaires at this point. Right. Um, again, market research. Inman, the magazine, does a ton about this kind of thing where these trends work better for you know this time of day. Sure. I don't know if, does Keller Williams have an Inman account that you guys have access to? But that, I mean, if you... Each industry has its own market research on these type of posts. Sure. Um, and again, we're on the East Coast. So 5 p.m. is what time in L.A.? Two, one, two. one or two. So, I mean, that's, you got to think, if we post 10 here, it's also even, you know, it's it's 7 o'clock in the morning or 8 o'clock or 6 o'clock in the morning there. 
So, but those aren't your clients. So if you were a product company, you'd worry about these things. You are here and you're only cared about your local market. So it's a lot easier for you guys. You're not trying to be a national, you know, Instagram or Facebook guy. People yeah. are looking at they they look late at night. I feel like there's a ton of people searching this stuff after they're in bed. Bad weather days are better than than others because people are on their phone more. Anything that keeps a person in, on their phone more. It'll kill your first post, but you're correct. It'll kill your first posts. If you notice, if you post three pictures an hour in a row, as soon as you post that next one, the first one's engagement stops. Post something silly, the first post in the morning. Post something like informational and, and like engaging on that second post in the evening. You'll, you'll see things shoot up. Yeah. Like sure. So there's Facebook. Yeah. But reels, post reels on Instagram and Facebook. Um, shorts on YouTube. Start a YouTube account and do nothing but post shorts. This could be a stupid question, but is reels going to be videos? Yes, reels are videos, but I've got a few buddies who have just been, if you if you only have listing pictures, Make those into a reel and add music to it. It's anything that's moving and eye-catching, it's about engagement. They have 0 0.05 second engagement rate metrics now. And that's considered an impression. If someone scrolls by you, it's an impression. That doesn't that means nothing. Like what? So it's as long as it's engaging, make it flashy, make it nice, keep it classy, San Diego. Holy crap. Don't be a used car salesman out there like. Be, just be classy with your stuff and there's a, a bunch i'm not being so be yeah. consistent that's a hundred percent of what it is and that's the whole point of this posting daily be consistent post daily even if it's like she said something silly and you delete it the next day after you post your next one post daily um i got an email from a lender or i get it every week and it has like different posts you can do and i've never done a reel but there was one in there that you could share mm -hmm. And I shared it, and it's got like 230 views. <laughs> I've never done a reel. I mean, anything is like yeah. anything's better than nothing, but at least try to try to put some thought behind it. Don't go. You know. and 230 is probably nothing to a lot of people, but I'm like to your followers, that's a lot. I mean, that's crap. I mean, if I get 230, if I had 10,000 views on one of my or 10,000 followers on one of my accounts, and if I get 600, that's a lot. Again. That's six percent. That's that's high numbers for engagement. Um, so yeah, I mean that's thank you. That's everything. I'm gonna give this just this basic calendar. It's in your Google Drive now. You can send out to everybody. That's right. Um, you and I can work on. We'll make a, a mock one where it's like coffee shop Monday and how to color code. For sure. We'll we'll do that one so you can send you know example and blank. So yeah, that's it, guys. Are there any other like pages other than Facebook and Instagram that you suggest those to or no? Uh, I, those are the two big ones. These are the two big ones. Um, I think most of the other ones are also focused on vertical video like TikTok. So you're posting from your phone anyways. I wouldn't schedule outside of that. They even want you, now they want you filming inside of the app. My phone shoots on 4K 60 frames with a wide angle lens and I can't use that on TikTok. It only has their one zoomed in frame. Yeah, so I mean, it's it's... I still film outside of everything, keep it in my camera and then put it in each program, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, shorts. But yeah, it's. Are you use okay, so talking about videos then, what are you using like the cinema or whatever? Now, like, in your settings, you can choose what format, especially if you have a newer phone. You go to, in your iPhone, you go to settings, do a big old scroll down to camera and you'll see um record video is one of the top ones 4k 60 frames high efficiency does that take up a lot of space in your phone it absolutely does but it's it's so much higher quality um you can shoot that video on your phone and then delete it are you transferring to are you using like google docs or something just not Whatever. Google Drive for what? Um, transfer your stuff and then or what do you whatever? If I edit, I just airdrop it to my phone when I'm sitting because I have a Mac at home. Oh yeah, okay. So I airdrop you once I'm done editing something on my computer, like if I'm doing something professional wise, and I'm or if I'm just wanting to edit it in vertical, 
I'll export it to my desktop and I'll just airdrop it to my phone and then just post to Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube shorts. And like, again, I'm copying and pasting the same caption and hashtags across the board. This doesn't have to be crazy over thought. I'm just, I mean, I don't know videos. So I mean, no, yeah, twice a week. I post reels twice a week. And then the rest of them are either educational, informational, you know, just helping and get contributing, not, not always trying to take. Yeah. Once a week, I might do an advertisement for myself where it's, I took this picture. I can do that for you. For you guys, it's, you know, your testimonials will be that. And even then, testimonials are the number one new business getters out there, period, will always be. It's a, it's a trust voucher is all it is. But you're not using this regular video. But once you change that setting, yeah. you're just using regular Reels, video. always film it this way. Never film it this way and try to crop it in. Always, if you're filming for reels, shoot it like a reel. Yeah. Any other things? Okay. I don't think anybody uses that with your phone. Uh, I'm curious to see like what examples are. Okay, let me see. Um, I think I can get on Instagram from. don't want to log on. I just want to view something. How do I just view? Dang it. Uh, so go to Instagram.com slash your uh, tag. Okay. Forward slash. Uh... Oh, it helps if I type it my own name incorrectly. Why is it not typing an E? E, go. Thank you. Great. Is that the garage and backyard? Yeah, this is the home studio. No, let me watch my video. It wants me to log in to watch a video. <laughs> um, Do you, is that normal for Instagram people? Do you have to be logged in to view? I have no idea. Um, is there is there any way you could share your screen so? Oh, I thought I was on what? Zoom land. Could see it. <laughs> They've been looking at you the whole time. How does one? Heck, man. <laughs> oh well, we got it. Here. We had it. Um, let's go to the Zoom menu. Yeah. Should be a big green square at the top says so share content. Yeah. Or share screen. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. How did you zoom in on that, mother? Uh, you should. <laughs> um, yeah, it's 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 wanting me to log in to be able to see this, and I'm not doing that. Um, I mean, it's just vertical video. You're literally just shooting here. I can. I mean, it's just posting, uh, filming a vertical video. Amy, uh -huh. yeah, I mean, it's just, I'm absolutely yeah, definitely. it's, and your phone has some of the most amazing stabilization to begin with. Um, yeah, so you can get a gimbal, you don't need it. Um, if you have an iPhone, there is something called cinematic as one of the options, use it. It, it adds depth of field, it makes things behind you blurry. So, yeah. Nice spike. I know. I love the electric bike. That's not electric. That's not, yeah. Oh, here's I see the that's a buddy of mine's custom chopper he dropped uh, off for pictures. Electric. Yeah, that's a <laughs> Gray Forest Garage, Overland Pioneers, Beard House Media. Yes. Um, so yeah, on here, I'm posting daily. Whether I mean I hate this picture right here. I don't like it. I don't care. I'm gonna go delete it probably the next few days, but I needed a post for that day. It doesn't give any value. That landing photo is. You can pin to the top of your page. Yes. No, I'm saying like it'd be like. That's a that's a picture, not a video. Video. It's a video. You cannot change the starting the photo. starting photo. The oh, the okay. no after the fact. I wish they would let that happen, but yes. Um. Yeah. If if you want a good example, who who all here follows Jenny Matioke? 
She does really good on stories. Meredith Lane does great on stories. Um, what's that? Is it good you do them? No. I can't, I can't publish her stories. Stories are the ones that go away within 24 hours. And, okay. and again, if you regret it, it's gone 24 hours. Just let it go. If you think you look dumb, post it anyways. You get it right if you feel like Yes. If you feel like you're an idiot, post it. It's typically going to be great. Do you feel like there's a preference uh, or kind of like a generous exposure to stories because it's a, you know, it's a newer feature, it's temporary? I think, you know, that started with Snapchat, you know, because you can Snapchat stories go away within 24 hours. That kind of started there. And if you'll notice the, you know, now YouTube is pushing shorts, which is the ver their vertical videos. Everyone's going to copy each other. I don't think it's a fad. I think it's another avenue. And like I said earlier, I think you really want to focus with shorts being your daily life because you can post more of those little screenshots throughout your day and they're gone the next day. So it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. I'm just curious because I feel like you get, or I mean, like on personal and professional, I feel like you get massive amounts of engagement on stories. You do. Well, that's that's also the re you can also turn stories now into reels. Yeah. Like it'll let you have that, that. That's an option. If you liked what your day was yesterday, post it the next day as a reel. Um, because for a while, I didn't even look at stories. I, I have started to more recently. I just didn't prefer it. So, yeah. So what you said here is stories, right? Your stories, yes. The top bubbles with the people's logo is stories. Okay. And then the rest of it's the feed. Yeah. And then... We'll go over this after class. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, we'll have a special class on it. Yes. Um, yeah. So we well, don't do it after guys, the class. We want to hear too. <laughs> if I could share the screen, I would have that. Um, but yeah, so I don't know where I was going to go there. But yeah, uh, make sure you're posting pictures, uh, 50 50 mix of pictures and videos. Make them tall if you can because. If you notice scrolling through your Instagram feed, you get to look a little bit longer at the vertical pictures. There's a horizontal one. You look a little bit, oh, look, that one's shot tall. It stays on your screen longer. You're more likely to get, I mean, everything's engagement these days. Staying top of mind is, social media is life goal. It's just staying top of mind. Is that why you put those little marks and put your hashtags further so it takes up more of the page? Yep, yep. Because the longer people engage with your account, the more your account will be pushed by Instagram and Facebook to those people. So again, that's when I talked to earlier, the first thing I said was you need to engage back with people. I schedule everything out, but a few times a day, I'm still jumping on and I'll even do the random scroll and like, it'll be scroll, like, scroll, like, scroll, like, just because when you engage with somebody, then their content is shown to them. Your content is shown to them. So just also, you don't want to be a crap human and make it a one-sided relationship. Engage with your followers, engage with your people. I, I wouldn't call it a touch, but I would call it at least, you know, a how to do like, they may or may not ever see that you like their stuff, but at least your stuff's getting in front of them more. There you go. I have a, a question. Do you, you I don't, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, Sorry. go for it. <laughs> do you? Yeah, I know, right? I never, never land over here. Do you have like an app or anything that you use when you're doing, you know, like, like I have several different Facebook accounts that I manage, um, you know, mm -hmm. my personal one, my business one, one for a club that I'm part of, one for a Airbnb I have, like, I want to be able to try and do more with Instagram, but I'm kind of already just on overload, just trying to do, keep up on Facebook and try and do ads and sponsor things and boost and yada, yada. Well, right here. Right here, we you see both these icons, Facebook and Instagram. Uh -huh. You can drop down and all of your different pages you manage or work with will be right here. Right. And you can just, just select that one and you can do the same thing you're doing for your own business and schedule out a few weeks of posts for each of those people. So okay. you're only dealing with scheduling. You're only posting, you know, once or twice a month for every single account you're doing. Okay, but that's Creator Studio. I, I think I yeah, missed that. Yeah, if you go straight to Facebook, yeah, if you go to if you go to uh, Facebook, there's a search bar at the top. Just type in Creator Studio, and it'll okay. take you right. Because I know there's also like a separate one if you're posting at, uh, you know, trying to boost posts and things like that, and it's like through the Meta. There's another. That's ad. an ad manager. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. When it comes to ads, I mean, for my, we'll call it my film studio at the house. 
I have it running for a buck a day year round. It's only going to reach about 200 accounts a day, but I don't care as long as they're new, fresh accounts. Um, right. That cost me 365 bucks a year if I boost a few extra, you know, here and there. Well, and I've had a problem what, just with a lot getting kicked back. And I just changed the payment form because I was using my business account for mine. And I'm doing one for a club that I'm in. And so I put it on my visa and they kicked it back. And you know, like, it's never, never land. You have no one to contact to go help. I don't, you know, it's not well, an ad. Ugh. The way the woke Facebook groups, they're flagging everything. Clubs have to do with alcohol, so they're going to flag it. Real estate has to do with fair housing, so they're going to flag it. Um, once you start disputing these claims, these copyright claims, or whatever you want to call them, um, it takes a while to get through the first couple. And then after that, they just start releasing them faster because they know it is an algorithm that are kicking. Right. But if you're, you know, if the first two or three, if you got kicked for fair housing, and the disputes are found in your favor, they're most likely be like, oh yeah, we're good. Just, and, and it'll be a yeah. lot faster. I've got agents that will um, post things where they're interviewing a mortgage lender. Mortgage laws are insanity when it comes to social media. They have to have certain numbers here and mentions there. And they'll pre-publish, they'll schedule these out knowing they're going to be kicked and they won't publish them until the dispute is over. So if you're really figuring this out, you could actually post a full month ahead if you know something might get kicked or post or punched, dispute it before it even gets published. So they see it when it's scheduled. Mm -hmm. Yep. They, can say, they see it when it's scheduled and they can say, oh, I don't know if we're going to like that. And then you can do your dispute before it's even published. Oh. Yeah. So it's not published and then kicked off immediately and then comes back up because then it's never going to go anywhere. Oh. They start counting your days the day that you published started it, right? Because like yeah. Yeah. if I publish for five days and it takes me two or three days to get the dispute, I'm still at a five day, but it's been already kicking for two days, three days. What they'll do is they'll take that money spend. If you're doing a buck a day for five days, they'll take the money spend and they'll put it in those two days. But okay. again, what's the point of doing an ad for two days for five bucks when you can spread it out over a week? Right. You don't spend a lot of money. You could have crap put five ads out there for a buck a day and just let it run if one's yeah. starting to work really well and one's not delete that one try a new one have a bunch going out you can target all the way down to zip code streets um school districts wink wink can't say that out loud um there are so many different demographics you can add you can say i want somebody who's if you have a house for sale you can boost that one house if it has a nice photography studio you can have an, even add interest like photography to some of these posts. Um, they want to make money, so they're giving you the tools to spend that money. Use them. Use, use Facebook ad spaces, yeah. I think that would be another great class to like figure out how to utilize it to its max potential because some of us are probably just posting and have no idea. I mean, now with this- Well, just posting is, I mean, here's the, here's the nitty gritty of it. If you can't post daily, you shouldn't even think about doing doing advertisements. You got to post daily first. You got to get the content out there because if you're more focused on ads, it's not going to really help you because someone's going to- can, You can do all of this in command. You can schedule everything in command. You can run paid ads through command and do all of your, you know, post it out as long as you want. You can do all of it, creating everything. I think this probably looks a little bit easier this year. The, the issue with third party is Facebook knows it's coming from a third party thing. There's a relationship with KW and Facebook and Instagram. Okay, then you're safe. Right. I say a lot of these these Hoot Suites and stuff like that. Facebook does not like them because you can also start when you're paying Hoot Suite to do these ads. Facebook isn't getting yeah, that big data. Facebook directly from. Perfect. So if as long as that relationship's established, I'm gonna say, even I stopped doing Matterport cameras because. When you post a third party link to Facebook, Facebook's like, no, nope, you're taking people away from me. Mm -hmm. So I stopped doing matter ports because people's like, my engagement's kind of gone down on my, my social media. I'm like, well, we you looked, I stopped posting, I sold the camera. I got rid of the program. Like I stopped offering Matterport as a service because it's housed on Matterport's website, which takes people away from Facebook. Or from, I mean, so the engagement, you had to put a lot of money behind boosting that post just so Facebook would show it to people. Um, YouTube is a little different. I think Facebook recognizes YouTube as a, as a mutual partner in a lot of these kind of things because they're 
all it's one of the big big leagues so they're less likely to kick those but yeah if you if you take anybody away from facebook they don't like it so, yeah. all right anything else scary tv lady <laughs> isn't that right what is your thoughts on trying to create like in facebook kind of agent funnels in facebook and kind of how does that work is it possible what kind of success for you i have no idea zero clue because if you want more uh, people just come in back and forth like for us like it's we're trying to capture somebody who's interested in that house but you're looking for more touches yeah, you want engagement, 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 top of mind. Literally, that's the whole real estate's whole game. Answer your phone and get engagement. <laughs> Done. You won. So starting with posting daily, the next step is really working on ads. Like she said, you can look at these metrics on everything. Holy crap, why did that one that picture of that beautiful kitchen go crazy? Crap, boost that post. Put a buck behind it a day until that thing sells. Um, yeah, you're trying to get as much money out of a house as you can for the for the agent and yourself. You know, this is, we're not kidding ourselves. You're in it for the money. Doesn't mean you can be a, a good human too. So. Awesome sounds. Um, when it comes to boosting and putting money behind Facebook and Instagram ads, a good rule of thumb is 10% of your commission should go towards marketing to grow, to grow, to maintain five to seven. But if you're, Hundred thousand dollar house, three percent commission, three hundred bucks. That's a pretty good amount. And by the way, if you're getting professional pictures and video, you hit it. Yeah. If you're just getting professional pictures and you have seventy five bucks left over, put seventy five bucks behind a Facebook ad. I mean, start doing this, and you will see so much growth in your business just because that's seventy. That's seventy five bucks. That's a lot of money. That's going to reach a lot of people. Is that like you're saying like seventy five bucks like? To do like a dollar a day type no, say boost it for two weeks or, or call it five bucks a day until the house sells oh, the, find your average list date how many days things if it's 30 days divide 75 by 30 put it on there until it sells you know that's going to at least grow your channel if if it doesn't sell the house it's going to grow your channel it's going to grow your, your your social medias um you know 10 of your commission is a good amount and that's by the way that's low for industry standards across the board for other industries so will you have to search Meta Business Suite, or will you still just be able to type in Creator Studio? I'm sure Facebook will bombard you. If you start using Creator Studio, they'll bombard you of the new links and where to go. And I'm sure if you type in Creator Space, it's going to pop up Meta Business Suite. But yeah, I have it as a hot link on my desktop. So I just so grab this. Yeah, I grab this little key and I just add it like that. Just bring it over and drop it right there. So I just have one click to it. I, I, I've not been on Facebook on the actual computer in years. So it's I go straight to creator. Yeah, I go straight to creator Facebook. I check Facebook on my phone. Like, yeah. But you don't, like, once you've established it, you don't have to go on Facebook every time and type in Creator Studio. You can just save that link. Just save that one link as a desktop link and boom, you're there. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That's very helpful. Well, thanks, y'all. Yes, thank you. It's very horrible. Thanks, Internet people. Yeah, thanks for doing showing. Absolutely. All righty, y'all. How do I make people stop staring at me on the computer? I'm clicking on it, and that didn't do it. Nope, still just staring at me. Actually, over the great thing is. Deuces. See where it says share.